There's this thing, my uncle used to love to fish. Like he was a huge fisher. I didn't really like it because I'm impatient and I was a kid and I wasn't really excited about fishing. But what I realized is he would be fishing for hours and hours and while he's fishing, my cousin and I used to be throwing rocks, skipping rocks on top of the water. <laughs> Just throwing them, skipping them. He's frustrated and mad that he can't get any fish to come. We never realized <laughs> that we're scaring off the very fish, <laughs> the, very, the very fish that he's trying to catch. Now, one of the top pastimes of leisure and relaxation is fishing, right? Now, I, I know this, the Romans predominant, well, all women other than myself. So how many people fish? Anybody? Okay, we got two. I knew I was going to find somebody. What you're watching whenever you go to relax to fish is, it is a fight over environment. It is a fight over a state of what a person, what each thing needs to live, to thrive, to breathe. The fish needs the water. But while you're relaxing, you're fighting to pull a fish out of his environment. The fish is trying to stay in the water and you're trying to pull the fish out. It's relaxation to you, but it's trauma to the fish. <laughs> that, that's what the fight is. You're like, man, I can't catch anything. You're frustrated about not being able to pull something that needs it to survive out of its environment. Here's what I mean. Every day you come here, you are trying to pull students who don't want to be here, most of them, out of an environment to get them to do something such as have discipline, study, behave in a certain manner. This is not their normal environment. You trying to convince them is trauma to them. You being loving to some students who live in chaos is trauma to them. It's not that they're fighting you. They're fighting to maintain their environment. Does that make sense to you? It is when you realize that they are trying to maintain their environment. What is the connection point? Every fisherman understands the power of bait. That, you, that the bait is what catches the fish, not your expertise. So if I if I'm the best bait is the bait that actually lives in the environment of the fish. The best bait you can use to catch a student is something that is connected to the environment that they're used to functioning in. So if you're ever in a position that you need to have a conversation to have a high level of connectivity, it is your job to take yourself and adapt to how do I shift from my environment to theirs for a moment. Now, you don't want to live in their environment too long because you need your environment to thrive. <laughs> She's like, hello. <laughs> so I've been on this thing telling everyone that will listen that at a certain point you at, in our professions, we give out so much. We are one person for everybody, but everybody's not enough for the one person. So you have to, at a certain point, when you, re when you realize, okay, I've given too much, you have to spoil what spoils you. And when I say spoil what spoils you, there are certain things that while you're doing it, it gives back to you simultaneously. It, there's a feeling that you get. There's this happiness that you get. I love speaking because I get a chance to mix my, my, my ability to study and process information, my humor, every part of what I am is mixed into this moment of being able to do this. So while I'm giving to you, I'm getting from you. There is, I'm spoiling what spoils me. There's some element of your job you love. There's some element of your day you love that at a certain point, you're going to have to spoil that part of yourself that needs a smile, that needs a break. And even if you can't do it during your day, don't let your head hit the pillow without finding some way to spoil what spoils you. Is it watching your kids? Is it watching TV? Is it going for a walk? Never be too busy making a life to have one. So spoil what, can you say it with me? Spoil what spoils me. Oh yeah, I don't think that anyone believed that. Like you didn't convince you. Come on, spoil what spoils me. Spoil what spoils me. Yes, like don't let a whole week go by and you do nothing for yourself. There are things that while you're giving to it, spoil what spoils you and ignore what ignores you. That there are some things that you overlook that you should be embracing because it spoils you. Like, when's the last time you did something for yourself that you just enjoy? But every day you're ignoring what, what ignores you. You're going after things that are hard to tackle. You're going after tough tasks and you're ignoring the things that spoils you that gives you something in return. So if you're going to shift your feelings, you have to ignore what ignores you and spoil what spoils you because you have to refuel. Sometimes we're asking people to give more effort. And even if, in a perfect environment, if everything went right, and no, there was nothing bad that happened for the rest of the school year. 
I come to a place that I realize that if I say you give 100%, I give 100%. If I gave 100% of a billion and you gave 100% of 100, it still wouldn't be enough to satisfy me. So we personally have to pour back into ourselves instead of asking an environment or a person to give us something that they can't give us.